The story begins, and we see a girl named Akane, a second-year college student who broke up with her boyfriend recently. At Akane's home, her friend Momo reacts strangely to their breakup. Akane wonders if the online game caused their split and finds it amusing that Takuma found a replacement in the game. She recalls when Takuma introduced her to the game, she's puzzled by his love for video games leading him to cheat. Akane shows Momo a text from Takuma asking for the expensive borrowed equipment back. Momo finds it silly and thinks Akane is fortunate to be done with him. Momo advises Akane not to spend all her time crying at home. Akane agrees, but lacks the energy. Akane logs into the Forest of Savior game and sees Takuma unfriending her. She regrets spending money on the game after the breakup. While playing alone, Yamada, a guild member, asks if she's searching for the Seer Stone. Akane notices Yamada's distant behavior. She explains she's hunting monsters to cope with the breakup stress. Yamada asks if he can camp nearby for the Seer Stone hunt, but she's offended and tells him to find his own spot. Yamada reluctantly agrees, but seems unconcerned. Kane comes across a live event celebrating the game's first year and recalls Takuma's words from the previous day. She wonders if he'll attend with his new girlfriend. Tears well up as she realizes she might still be holding on to their past. Akane asks Momo to go to school and shop for event outfits with her. Momo thinks Akane has moved on, but it's clear she still has feelings for Takuma and wants to make him regret replacing her. They give Akane a makeover while shopping. At the event, Akane wonders how game characters would be in real life. She overhears someone mentioning Takuma's name and turns around, spotting him with his girlfriend. Accidentally, she bumps into someone, losing sight of them. The person helps her up but seems uninterested and leaves. His attitude reminds her of Yamada from the game, who had a character with a no mask and afro hair. She calls out Yamada's name, but he asks who she is. Yamada questions Akane's identity, making her uneasy. Takuma and his girlfriend approach, but he ignores Akane and focuses on Yamada. He warmly greets Yamada and introduces him as a pro gamer to his girlfriend. Annoyed, Akane introduces Yamada as her new boyfriend. Initially unsure, Yamada agrees. When Akane offers him a discount code for a seer stone she got at the event, Takuma is taken aback, realizing Akane has shifted Yamada's attention after following him online for years. Akane notices Takuma's girlfriend consoling him and becomes envious, seeing her plan succeed. After the event, Akane and Yamada go to a pub. Akane complains about Takuma and his girlfriend, and Yamada responds distantly. Akane admits she dressed up to make Takuma regret leaving her and asks about Yamada's gaming career. Yamada explains, but Akane knows little about gaming. She asks a few questions, but his answers remain distant. Akane warns that his disinterest won't attract women, but Yamada says he's not interested in romance and never had a girlfriend. Akane thinks his good looks are wasted but agrees that romance is painful because she was cheated on. She imagines Takuma and his girlfriend becoming teary-eyed and excuses herself to the restroom. Akane realizes her clothes are soiled and her foot hurts from the earlier stumble. When she returns, Yamada is gone, assuming he left because she suggested it. Overwhelmed, Akane sobs until Yamada returns. Akane felt really embarrassed when she left Yamada's place. While she was taking a shower at her own house, she suddenly remembered the necklace Takuma had given her, but couldn't find it anywhere. She thought it might be at Yamada's house, so she logged into the game and started chatting with Ruri-chan. While they were talking, Akane started feeling stressed out about the missing necklace and began thinking about the moments when Takuma had given it to her. Out of nowhere, Yamada also logged into the game. Akane felt kind of awkward because Ruri-chan was so happy to see Yamada and they were discussing game stuff. She sent a private message to Yamada about the necklace that was missing. He replied pretty quickly, saying he hadn't seen it at his place. Then he changed the topic and started talking about the guild storage, saying that the stuff in there was useless and junk. Even though Ruri-chan defended their intentions, Yamada insisted that the items were worthless and causing problems. Reading their conversation, Akane felt really embarrassed about the things she had put in the guild storage. She admitted that she had hoped those things would be useful for others, but Yamada didn't seem to care and thought they were a hassle to deal with. Ruri-chan tried to calm things down and warned Yamada that his words could hurt Akane, who had contributed a lot. But despite what Ruri-chan said, Yamada kept criticizing, and it made Akane so upset that she silently left the game and went to bed. As Yamada kept reading the chat, he accidentally stepped on Akane's heart necklace, breaking it. This made Akane really angry and hurt, so she left the game without saying anything. 
The next day, Akane woke up from a nightmare about Takuma and talked to her friend Momo about it. Momo didn't seem to take it seriously and changed the subject to Akane's issues with Yamada. Akane was more focused on finding the necklace, but Momo scolded her for being too trusting and still caring about her ex-boyfriend. Outside, Akane saw some high school girls confessing their feelings to a popular classmate, which reminded her of her own experience of being dumped by a senior named Saito. She also spotted Yamada in the group, seemingly forgetting about her. Instead of playing games like usual, she told Yamada to think about how his actions might affect others emotionally. Later on, Yamada reached out to Akane to return the broken heart necklace that Takuma had given her. They met up at the train station, and initially, Akane planned to just throw the necklace away. However, Yamada followed her and gave her an umbrella before leaving. Thinking about Yamada's unexpected act of kindness, Akane lay in bed. Her mother brought her some old stuff, including the broken necklace and Yamada's umbrella. She asked Momo to help her clean up her apartment, and during the cleaning, they found the missing items. Akane and Momo went out for a barbecue dinner and ended up getting a bit tipsy. Later, they decided to visit Yamada's house to return the umbrella. Yamada seemed annoyed because they came over late at night. Akane thanked him for going with her to an offline game event. Yamada didn't really seem to care and mentioned that Ruri-chan had been worried about Akane's absence from the game. Akane promised to log in once she got back home. While they were playing the game together, fighting against a monster, Akane realized that the creature had split into two after her attack. She called out for Yamada's help, but then she noticed that his character wasn't responding. Despite her repeated requests, she ended up getting killed by the monster. It turned out that Yamada had fallen asleep at his desk in real life. Momo arranged a get-together for Akane to meet someone she might like. However, during the meetup, Akane seemed upset and preoccupied with her phone, which disappointed Momo. It turned out Akane was receiving messages from someone named Ruri-chan, causing her distraction. Momo questioned if Ruri was truly a girl and wondered if they might be an older man. Akane insisted that Ruri was a high school girl. On their way back home, Akane saw a cosplayer dressed as Ruri's character, which reminded her of Princess Ruri. Once back home, Akane eagerly logged into her game and became more excited about it than any potential romantic connections. She found Yamada and Ruri online, observing them discussing their guild experiences. Akane briefly pondered if Ruri and Yamada were a couple but decided to join them in collecting game items. Eventually, Yamada left due to other plans, leaving only Akane and Ruri online. During this time, memories of Akane's past relationship with Takuma resurfaced, leading her to notice similarities between Ruri, Yamada, and her past experience. This stirred up unfamiliar emotions within her. Meanwhile, Ruri and Yamada exchanged private messages, and Yamada bid farewell to Ruri with a see you later. Akane spent the entire day thinking about the possibility of Yamada and Ruri being together. After her classes, she encountered a guy from a previous group date and her lecture. He noticed her phone use in class and greeted her enthusiastically. They walked to the bus station, where Akane spotted a girl who resembled Ruri's game character. At that moment, the girl was approached by Yamada, and they left together, leaving Akane perplexed. She returned home, reflecting on her feelings and thoughts. Meanwhile, Ruri messaged Akane about a cafe opening with a theme from the game they played, inviting Akane, Yamada, and other guild members. Despite her reservations about Yamada and Ruri's relationship, Akane accepted the invitation, eager to uncover the truth. The next morning, Akane woke up feeling fine, despite Momo's worries. She looked forward to meeting her guild members, particularly Yamada, at the cafe. She attempted to use her phone's map to locate the cafe, but ended up getting lost. A friendly, bespectacled guy approached her and asked if she was headed to the cafe. They chatted about the game, and Akane agreed with most of his viewpoints, confessing her relative newness to the game. She mentioned Yamada, offering feedback on her game mistakes, but her guild leader was supportive. As they neared the cafe, Akan spotted Ruri waving from across the street. Yamada was nearby, conversing with an elderly man. Akane initially greeted Yamada before enthusiastically acknowledging the girl she assumed was Ruri-chan. However, she soon realized the girl differed from her in-game character and needed to be introduced to the real girl who bore an uncanny resemblance to Ruri-chan's character. In a flashback, Yamada aided an intoxicated woman to his room as she was too heavy to carry. After placing her on the bed, he turned on his computer to practice with his teammates. Mentioning the woman in his bed surprised his teammates, prompting inquiries. One of them even requested pictures of her, 
Her request Yamada declined. While his teammates conversed, Yamada overheard the woman murmuring and approached her, offering water. Unexpectedly, she began crying and embraced him tightly, imploring him not to abandon her if he didn't love her. Yamada was puzzled by her mixed signals and endeavored to comprehend her emotions. Despite his fatigue, he stayed with her to provide comfort. However, she suddenly vomited, interrupting their conversation. Akan thought the girl was Princess Ruri, but the girl denied it and didn't recognize Akane. Sitting between Eita and an older man, Yamada, Yamada suggested they introduce themselves first. Eita introduced himself as Eita Sasaki, 19 years old, and as Princess Ruri in the game. Akane was surprised and called him Nikama, but Eita explained that he didn't quite fit that label. Akane was upset to learn that she had shared personal matters with Eita without realizing he was male. The older man, Takezo Kamota, introduced himself as a strawberry farmer who played as Takezo. Then, they introduced Runa Sasaki, who Akane initially mistook for Ruri. Eita had based his in-game character on his sister. Lastly, they introduced Yamada, whom Akane knew from the guild meeting. Runa seemed curious about Akane's connection with Yamada and gave her an annoyed look. Akane had a conversation with Yamada to clear up some misunderstandings. She had assumed Yamada and Ruri were in a romantic relationship due to their flirty behavior in the game. However, Yamada clarified that Eita was simply a friend he played with occasionally. Akane felt relieved and admitted that she had suspected Yamada of lying about not having a girlfriend. Yamada reassured her that he was telling the truth. While Runa listened silently, she wondered if Akane had feelings for Yamada. Runa asked an inappropriate question that left Akane without words. Eita tried to hush his sister, but Akane took a sip of her drink and accidentally dropped it when she noticed Yamada looking at her. Yamada advised her not to clean up the broken glass due to the risk. In the process of stopping her, their hands brushed slightly. Blushing due to Runa's question, Akane agreed with Yamada. Yamada felt uncomfortable and stepped outside to take a phone call. Aita also left, mentioning buying flowers. Akane felt relieved once they were gone. Takizo comforted her with kind words, but Runa continued to stare at Akane, showing strong emotions that Akane couldn't decipher. Akane and Yamada found themselves on the same train, heading home. Akane attempted to strike up a conversation, but Yamada responded briefly and without much enthusiasm. Akane noticed women around her staring at her, but due to a sudden stop, she ended up colliding with Yamada's chest. After some hesitation, she accepted Yamada's suggestion to switch seats. As they changed seats, Akane realized the women were actually looking at Yamada, not her. She remembered being surprised by Yamada's good looks, which might explain Runa's negative opinion of her. They stopped by a convenience store, and Akane bought pudding for Yamada's dinner. During their walk, Akane asked casual questions about Yamada's job and eating habits. Yamada misunderstood and mentioned that he mostly ate convenience store food. Worried about his nutrition, Akane recommended getting healthier meals and asked him to wait at a nearby park. While waiting, Yamada thought about how Akane seemed happier now compared to when she looked sad due to her ex-boyfriend's cheating. Akane returned with bags of curry she had cooked and offered them to Yamada as a packed lunch. Before he could decline, he received a call from Runa, who apologized for her behavior and invited Akane to hang out again. Akane gladly accepted and informed Yamada. He smiled at her cheerful expression. Later, Yamada remembered he had a tutoring job for Runa, on the same day she had planned to hang out with Akane. Ruri-chan proudly showed off her favorite avatars from the game. She displayed Alice's flower clock set, a popular but non-powerful item. Then came the priest's holy robe, fully upgraded and not tradable. Next were the HP-boosting red roses for the queen set. Finally, she revealed the powerful guide to the heart set, which boosted all stats by 100. Aita had shared this as Princess Ruri, while Runa didn't approve of him being a Nekama. Akane reached the designated meeting spot, but instead of finding Runa there, she encountered an unfamiliar man. Runa had sent Akane a message explaining her lateness due to a situation. The man wrongly assumed Akane was Ruri and made her feel uncomfortable with his remarks. He even followed her into the women's restroom, making her feel trapped. Meanwhile, Yamada went over to Ada's house for a tutoring session with Runa, wondering why Ada wasn't with Akane. As Akane pondered her escape, the man knocked on the restroom door, expressing concern. When he tried to enter forcefully, fear paralyzed Akane. Runa eventually confessed that Akan had unintentionally agreed to meet an enthusiastic supporter of her brother's in-game character. Yamada chose to help Akan rather than conduct the tutoring. Using Runa's account, 
Aita invited the stranger. Just then, Takezo arrived. Worried about Akani due to Aita's exaggerated comment, the group convened at the meeting spot and traveled there in Takezo's car. Runa, in the car, appeared envious of the attention Akane was getting. Ta disclosed that Akane simply wanted to befriend Runa. They discovered Akane with the stranger. Takezo confronted him, implying legal action. Meanwhile, Ada checked on Akane and noticed her leg bandage. The stranger had given her medicine, presuming she was in pain, but Akane had accidentally injured herself. Yamada apologized for not informing Akane about the tutoring session. Runa seemed upset and fled. As Runa departed, Akani attempted to reach out but stumbled in front of Yamada. Concerned, Runa returned. Before she could apologize, Aita cautioned her about a lecture. Yamada cautioned Runa about her risky actions. Aita was on the verge of addressing Runa when Akani claimed to be suffering from a stomach ache. Akani inquired about Runa's gaming level and proposed hunting together. Runa was taken aback by Akani's friendly demeanor, expecting anger. Akani contemplated leaving the guild but chose not to hold a grudge against Runa. She entrusted the lecturing to Eita. Eita, Yamada, and Takazo arrived with the requested medicine. They located Akane, and Runa and Akane reconciled, with Akane offering comfort to Runa. Takazo inquired about Akane's stomach. Yamada was captivated by the relief evident in Akane's smile. Yamada questioned Akane about any regrets concerning the arranged meeting. Akane acknowledged her irritation, but expressed greater disappointment about not spending time with Runa. Yamada understood Akani's yearning for friendship. Akani believed that they would eventually become friends. Suddenly the fan proposed to Akani, but she firmly told him to leave. Runa believed that acting quiet and obedient would earn her kindness, but this made it tough for her female classmates to approach her. Despite past bullying, she remained strong and found friends online. Being in the same class for three years and being called by her last name didn't bother her. Runa. An attractive girl from the Sasaki family was admired by many boys. Yet her unique fashion style, heavily influenced by Lolita fashion, made them feel intimidated. Her idea of an ideal man was shaped by her handsome older brother and his friend. One day, she saw her classmates doing a strange dance and shared it online, though she chose to watch rather than join. At home, Runa was somewhat self-centered, shy, and kept to herself. Recently, she became friends with a cane, a mature girl who accepted Runa even when she wasn't pleasant. Akani didn't always give in to Runa's wishes or offer comfort. Once, when Runa went to show Akan the dance, Akani was busy on her phone which upset Runa. Yet, Akani made amends by taking Runa to see her favorite actor near the train station. Being with Akani brought Runa a different kind of excitement compared to her brothers. She realized having more friends to dance with would be enjoyable. Momo wanted to go on a group date with Akani but Akani was busy playing games with Runa. Momo talked about how fortunate Akani was to meet Yamada, who was unexpectedly kind about game stuff. However, Yamada found leveling up in the game with Akani boring and usually declined. Runa assisted Akani in leveling up quickly in the game Forest of Savior. Yamada corrected Akani's spelling and offered extra items, but she declined, wanting to excel on her own. Yamada replied with a smiley emoji. During a tutorial with Momo, Akani's computer screen caught fire and she couldn't afford a replacement. Runa informed her brother Eita, who brought Yamada to fix it. Eita called Yamada multiple times requesting a spare computer. Initially, Yamada didn't have one, but after seeing Akani's dedication in the game, he changed his mind. Yamada went to Akani's house with Runa, who had just finished tutoring. He agreed to try fixing the computer, but tempered Akani's expectations. Akane prepared snacks, and surprisingly, Yamada agreed. While repairing the computer, Yamada complimented Akani's curry, bringing her joy. Runa remembered Eita mentioning a new girl who might be a good match for Yamada. Secretly, Runa took a photo of Yamada and Akani and sent it to Eita, who became quite excited. Eita suggested that Runa help bring them closer together. Runa observed their conversation and devised a plan. Determined, Runa aimed to create a romantic comedy scenario for her brother. She began by inviting Akane and Yamada to take a bath together leaving them puzzled. Next, she tried to get Akane to eat the toast she made, but Akane ended up consuming the entire loaf. Then, Runa encouraged Akane to physically approach Yamada, believing it would strengthen their relationship. Due to Runa's intervention, Akane leaned towards Yamada, and her hair fell into his eyes. As they both tried to fix the situation, they became awkward due to their closeness. Yamada felt he should leave since he didn't have enough tools. Runa noticed this, and thought Yamada was attempting to escape. 
Girls with thin hair can use a hairpin for a simple ponytail. However, those with thick hair might find it breaks. Runa, who had long and thick hair, envied Akane, who could easily tie back her thinner hair. Meanwhile, Takezo enjoyed a break at his strawberry farm in beautiful weather. Yamada quickly headed to a nearby store for drinks. To his surprise, the employee recognized his usual choice. Just before leaving, she started a chat, talking about her time at Tusei Academy. It was puzzling for him that someone working at a store was interested in this. Back at Akane's place, Yamada found her and Runa sleeping soundly, mouths wide open. Akane, asleep on the floor, had prepared omelet rice for him. Careful not to disturb her sleep, Yamada handled her laptop and tools. While watching her sleep, he remembered a past incident. Gently, he took off her hair clip, letting her hair down. Holding the clip, he gazed at her without her noticing. Just then, the doorbell rang, announcing the arrival of Takuma, Akane's ex-boyfriend. Takuma reached Akane's apartment and was surprised to see Yamada opening the door. As a big fan, he asked why Yamada was there. He wondered if Yamada might be Akane's new boyfriend, but he couldn't find any pictures of Yamada with women online, making him doubtful. Takuma brought back the bento boxes Akane had given him, explaining his concern for her after they broke up. Yamada reassured him that Akane was fine and offered to let Takuma see her, but he politely refused. Takuma left, asking Yamada not to tell Akane about his visit. Yamada waited by the door until Akane woke up. He returned the bento boxes, saying they appeared mysteriously. Akane laughed at his attempt to cover up what happened earlier and thanked him for handling the situation. Before she left, Yamada returned her hairpin and admitted that he had taken it off while she slept. He confessed there was no particular reason for doing so and received a call from Eita, leaving Akane puzzled. Facing financial difficulties, Akane applied for a part-time job at a convenience store. She talked to Momo and learned that Eita had fixed her laptop for free. Akane wanted to repay him, but their conversation was cut short as Momo's group date went poorly, leaving her still searching for her soulmate. Akane logged in and was greeted by Eita as Princess Ruri and Komoda as Takizo, the guild submaster. Akane approached Princess Ruri to ask about the laptop repair cost, but Ruri explained it was done with second-hand parts and without any charge. Takizo suggested involving Akane in their plan to find a solution. At school, while tossing out trash bags, Yamada caught the attention of freshman girls. Okamoto approached him and invited him to join a school pageant, which Yamada had been declining. They talked about a gaming session when a classmate told Yamada that his phony was ringing constantly. Returning to the classroom, he found Tsubaki had placed a towel under his phone to muffle the sound. Yamada returned the towel and learned that Tsubaki had watched his previous day's FPS match stream, commenting on his disappointing performance. She suggested his poor performance was due to neglecting FPS and now favoring MMO games. Yamada explained the lag caused by the overseas server, but Tsubaki dismissed it as an excuse. Yamada received a guild announcement from Eita, inviting him to Tusei Academy's public culture festival and asking him to get tickets. In a casual conversation with Tsubaki, Yamada noticed Akane listed as the guild's sponsor among the attendees. Yamada added an external GPU to Akane's laptop, which initially confused her due to her lack of technical knowledge and the device's size. When she tested it, she was amazed by the speed improvement. Akane thanked Yamada for upgrading her laptop, but he clarified that he used spare parts from Aita. As Yamada left, Akane felt joy and satisfaction, appreciating that Yamada had finally resolved her PC issues. Akane received an invitation from Rurichan and Takezo for a special Welcome Back Akane private event, a dungeon raid tour. Though nervous at first, Takezo reassured her and promised full support during the adventure. This gesture made Akane realize Takezo's genuine kindness, both in-game and in real life. With Rurichan cheering them on, their spirits lifted, and Akane decided not to burden her guildmaster and submaster. They entered the dungeon, and Akane was amazed by Takezo's incredible transformation, exclaiming that he truly embodied the qualities of a demon god. During the school's culture festival, Akane arrives late because of work. Alongside Eita, Komota, and Runa, they explore Tusei Academy. Runa is worried about an upcoming entrance exam. After Eita and Komoda visit the haunted house, Akane and Runa continue their exploration. Runa excuses herself to use the restroom. Akane waits and receives a text from Eita suggesting they meet in the courtyard. Akane spots Eita chatting with classmates, preventing her from asking about Yamada. Yamada leaves Tsubaki's side to meet Akane near the restroom. 
Earlier, he couldn't approach her due to issues with their class booth. Yamada inquires about Akani's solitude. Onlookers, including Tsubaki, notice their interaction. Akane explains Runa's predicament. With Akane's help, Runa accompanies Yamada to the nurse's office. The doctor recommends rest due to nervousness. Runa observes Yamada updating Eita, but doesn't want him to know about her stomachache. She hasn't enjoyed the festival or eaten. Akane offers to get her some food. Akane leaves Runa and purchases food and a special Tusei Festival t-shirt with Yamada. They discuss Yamada's class booth. They notice others observing them, and Yamada's teacher playfully teases him for being with Akan. The teacher inquires about Akan's school and jokingly hints at Yamada's interest in older women. First-year students speculate if Akane is Yamada's girlfriend. Akane clarifies that they're not romantically involved. They reunite with Eita and Komoda outside. Eita asks about Runa, while Akane feels uncomfortable with the attention. Eita jests about them dating. Yamada plays along leading to a misunderstanding that embarrasses Akane. She walks away, expressing her lack of interest in Aita. Before Ada catches up, Yamada approaches Akane. Akane takes a moment alone to compose herself. She regrets her reaction and feels embarrassed. Accidentally bumping into Tsubaki, Akane rushes away. Tsubaki advises her to walk more slowly. Seeing Yamada following her, Akane hurries off. Tsubaki questions Yamada about his connection to Akane, and he warns her about a hazardous staircase. They cross paths at the staircase landing. Yamada apologizes, and Akane notes that it's the first time he's called her by her name. Yamada is taken aback. He apologizes again and explains his participation in Eita's joke. Akane clarifies that she's not upset but rather embarrassed. She walks away, and Yamada smiles. Yamada shifts the topic, but Akane asks how he would have reacted if she'd taken Aita's joke seriously. After a brief contemplation, Yamada lightens the mood. Akane playfully withdraws her question with a joke and moves on. She suggests avoiding romantic jokes and continues on her way. Yamada responds that it would have been an honor and confesses that he thinks of himself as uninteresting. Akane reflects briefly before they buy food for Runa. Yamada's classmates encourage him to join the Mr. Pageant, but he declines. Tsubaki becomes irritated and signals for Okamoto to wrap up the conversation. Okamoto playfully raises Yamada's arm, giving the impression that he's participating. The crowd cheers, and Tsubaki is puzzled. Instead of Yamada, it's Okamoto who steps forward. The audience pokes fun and asks for Yamada. Everyone watches as Runa enjoys her food. Eita requests some takoyaki, but Runa playfully refuses to share. After work, Akani and Yamada leave together. Akani plans to make him a bento to show appreciation for helping with her laptop. She also talks about his unique eating habits. Akani sneezes as a cyclist passes by, and Yamada quickly moves her out of danger. They continue talking while Akani wears a mask to stay safe. Yamada hopes her cold doesn't worsen. Later, Akani chats with Momo while doing her nails. She finds genuinely kind men intimidating, as she can't tell if they're interested in women. Momo advises her to openly express her feelings. Suddenly, Runa contacts Akane urgently regarding something important about their gaming guild and wants to meet. Akane and Runa meet at the park. Runa is concerned about a new female member joining their guild. Akane is disappointed by Runa's exclusive attitude towards women and hopes the new member shares their gaming interests. Runa plans to distance the new player, but Akane suggests they become friends. Runa fears losing Akane's friendship with the new member. Runa reveals that Yamada invited the new member to play games. Yamada cautioned Runa against creating negative experiences, like with Akane. Runa suggests Akane should directly ask Yamada for more details. Passing Kawaii Cram School, Tsubaki overhears gossip about a couple overcoming challenges. She asks Okamoto and Yamada about it. Okamoto says they can't answer due to their focus on video games. Tsubaki credits Yamada for introducing her to his gaming guildmaster. Yamada admits he doesn't discuss gaming with female friends. Okamoto teases Yamada when he gets an anonymous call, but Tsubaki defends him. After class, Yamada, Okamoto, and Tsubaki walk together. Okamoto mentions feeling hungry, and they notice Yamada on the phone. Okamoto asks if he's calling the unknown number, and Tsubaki falls silent. Akane calls Yamada back, explaining her job situation and sneezing. She brings up something she wanted to ask him earlier, but has to rush to work. Yamada suggests finding a replacement, but Akane prefers covering the shift. They agree to talk in-game later. Waiting for Okamoto, Tsubaki inquires about the girl Yamada was talking to. 
Yamada confirms she's in their guild and is actually their guild master. Tsubaki asks about Akani, but Yamada stays quiet. At the convenience store, the manager thanks Akani for covering someone's absence. She grumbles but starts working, feeling unwell. Akani drops her phone and notices Yamada's number. She reflects on her feelings and starts her shift. Tsubaki logs into the game and joins the Chocolate Rabbit Guild. Akane has some regrets, but no longer has feelings for her ex-boyfriend. Yamada helps Runa study, while she gets a call from Akane, who's sick and can't play games. Runa hopes Akane gets better. Akane takes cold medicine at home. She tries to drink water but can't due to a sore throat. Feeling weak, she attempts to get a snack but fails. With no food and her friend not answering, Akane realizes her bad luck. She tries to bike to buy food but collapses. Feeling hopeless, Akane realizes she could have ordered delivery. She sits down, crying, and thinks she's imagining things when she sees Yamada. Meanwhile, Momo has a good time on a group date, but doesn't respond to Akane's calls because she's busy. Tsubaki meets Okamoto, who's curious about Yamada not answering calls. Tsubaki thinks Yamada's busy with tutoring, but Okamoto disagrees. Okamoto thinks Yamada might be with a girl, while Tsubaki disagrees. Okamoto suggests Tsubaki should make a move before someone else does. Tsubaki recalls meeting Yamada. She accused him of cheating in a game but later regretted doubting his skills. She suggests he becomes a pro gamer, and they talk about finding someone special. Meanwhile, Yamada takes care of Akan at her apartment. Tsubaki notices Yamada's kindness, though he's usually quiet. She hears classmates discussing a failed date with Yamada and questioning his preferences. During a class duty meeting, Tsubaki asks Yamada about the rumors. He reveals never being in love but caring for a bullied girl. Tsubaki decides not to develop feelings since he's uninterested in romance. Meanwhile, Yamada continues caring for Akane, taking her to the hospital and returning to her apartment. Akane wakes to find Yamada by her bed. Akane panics, but realizes Yamada's real. She appreciates his kindness and talks about his rejection of girls. Akane mentions her breakup and advises Yamada to remember her happily. Yamada recalls making his friend cry and agrees. Akane checks her temperature and eats the yogurt Yamada bought. She cries, and Yamada jokingly asks about the yogurt. Despite worries about his inexperience, she's comforted by his care. Her legs cramp and Yamada massages them. Akane accidentally hits her head and feels embarrassed. As dawn nears, Yamada reassures he's used to less sleep and reminds her of a checkup. Akane apologizes repeatedly, and Yamada leaves. After making a meal, Akane checks her phone for Yamada's reply. Yamada assures her he's okay. Akane thinks about how to show her appreciation. Then, a message from Runa pops up, inviting her to hang out over the weekend. Akane wonders if Runa logged in to meet the new guild member. Taking a break, Akane logs into Forest of Savior, where she meets Princess Ruri and Tsubaki. They ask Akane to join them on a hunt, all of them playing as paladins. Akane talks about her worries about picking the wrong job, but Tsubaki tells her that paladins can handle bosses on their own. Akane reassures Tsubaki, and they discuss their different views. While playing, they struggle against a Tauf monster. Akane playfully teases Princess Ruri for not helping much, but Princess Ruri promises to step in if things get deary. Tsubaki finds Akane's teasing Amusing. Using their healing abilities, Akane and Tsubaki keep attacking the monster without hesitation. They make progress, but the monster regenerates health over time. Princess Ruri offers to help, but they decline. Tsubaki suggests another tactic, but it falls short and the monster retreats. Akane and Tsubaki discuss their strategies, while Princess Ruri watches affectionately. Akane excuses herself, leaving Tsubaki with Princess Ruri. In the real world, Tsubaki thinks about Akane's kindness. Akane calls Yamada for info about the monster they fought. Yamada admits he doesn't know much but still gives advice. Princess Ruri helps Tsubaki fix her armor. They talk about Tsubaki's feelings for the guild. Tsubaki talks about her lack of confidence and independence, and Princess Ruri encourages her to take action. Akane calls Yamada and asks if he's tired. She admits she called just to hear his voice and ends the call suddenly. She contacts Momo to talk about something important. The next day, Akane apologizes to Runa and agrees to meet Momo at a cafe. Akane talks about getting dumped, which surprises Momo. They get interrupted by annoying guys, but the waiter, Aita comes to their rescue. Akane thanks Aita, mentioning his connection to Yamada. Momo comments on how gaming is more fun than group dates. Aita declines an offer for karaoke and meets Akane and Momo. Akane tells Aita she has something important to discuss. 
Ada is taken aback when he unexpectedly meets Akan, and he wonders if she'll express her fondness for him. Akan says sorry for any confusion, and they continue their conversation. Momo notices Akan's interest in someone and playfully teases her. Ada compliments Akan for her resilience after her recent breakup. Momo discloses that Akan is still unsure about pursuing her crush and her past breakup. Akani aims to better herself and be truthful about her emotions with Momo and Princess Ruri's support. Ata assures Akani that the person she likes is a well-known good individual. He admires Akani's straightforwardness and motivates her to confess her feelings. Akani decides to confess and heads to Ada's home. Momo hopes Akani won't get hurt and asks about Ada's relationship status. Akani ponders her feelings for Yamada and realizes her genuine affection for him. She goes to Yamada's house, where he offers to assist her. Akani attempts to confess, but noisy neighbors disrupt the moment. Due to Yamada's cram school commitment, they continue talking on their way to the station. Almost being hit by a car, Akani delays her confession and promises to try again. While crossing the street, Yamada holds her hand. They reach the station, and Yamada apologizes for not fully grasping Akane's intentions. He suggests connecting later. Excited, Akane and Yamada bid farewell. At cram school, Tsubaki wonders about the possibility of rain during their journey home. After class, Yamada wants to head home but gets caught in a heavy rain. Okamoto offers his umbrella to Yamada, but covertly approaches Tsubaki. He hands his umbrella to Tsubaki, who reluctantly accepts. Under the umbrella, Tsubaki and Yamada leave school together. Yamada spots a girl resembling a Ken and becomes captivated. Tsubaki inquires if he knows her, and he denies it. Suddenly, Yamada dashes toward the station, leaving Tsubaki with the umbrella. Tsubaki chases Yamada but stumbles, breaking her glasses. Yamada assists her, and she confesses her feelings, leaving him puzzled. Tsubaki requests Yamada's attention for the day. Meanwhile, Akane gets a text from Yamada explaining they can't talk, which saddens here. Yamada goes to the Sasaki residence to tutor Runa. Ida inquires if someone confessed to Yamada, assuming it's Akane. However, Yamada's thoughts are consumed by Tsubaki, who confesses and leaves him unsure how to respond. Yamada attempts to reach Akane unsuccessfully. He apologizes for not being able to listen to her the prior night. Akane tries to uplift his spirits and shares her conversation with Momo. Late at night, Tsubaki prepares to meet Yamada. She waited for him on the bridge, and Yamada arrived punctually at the rendezvous point. Yamada and Tsubaki met as planned. Tsubaki bravely opened up to Yamada about her hidden feelings for him. She admired his attitude, voice, appearance, and kindness. She even knew about the changes brought into his life by Akane. Yamada listened respectfully, though he couldn't feel the same romantic way. Tsubaki was grateful for the chance to express herself. During their talk, Tsubaki noticed an oil-based paint drawing on Yamada's left hand, recognizing it as Akane's creation. Takizo generously sponsored the upcoming December BBQ party for the Chocolate Rabbit Guild. Akane arrived on time, joining those who were there earlier. Takizo and Runa, already at the restaurant, came over to her. Aita playfully teased Akane for looking for Yamada. Takizo mentioned his friend owns the restaurant and invited the whole guild. The fancy restaurant intrigued Runa and Akane. Four important people called Takezo, Mr. President, catching their interest. The guild had a great meal together, and four staff members brought trays of food and drinks as a gift for Takezo. Eita praised Takezo, who expressed his desire to keep playing the game with the guild, supported by Runa. Yamada came late and found Akani a bit drunk. Runa complained about Akani being clingy, and Ada suggested Yamada make sure she gets home safely. Yamada briefly left and returned to find Akani waking up. Despite being intoxicated, Akane wanted to remember Yamada's help and grabbed her phone. Yamada reassured her and advised her to lower her voice. As they walked home, Yamada held Akane's wrist to steady her. When Akane's heel got stuck, Yamada impressed her by getting it unstuck. They held hands tightly as they reached Akane's apartment. As Yamada tried to leave, Akane asked if he had feelings for her. Yamada turned around, smiled, and confessed his feelings. Yamada promised to confess as many times as needed until she remembered, and they hugged. The next morning, Yamada called Akan to reassure her. After classes, Akani, Momo, and Maki met at a cafe to talk about her relationship with Yamada. Momo remained positive based on Yamada's actions. Yamada and Akani met at a nearby cafe. Akani asked Yamada not to worry about their relationship due to his studies. Yamada complimented her canine teeth, making Akani blush. As they walked, Yamada realized there was something Akane hadn't mentioned. 
she said she wanted to hold hands while walking. Yamada eagerly reached out and asked for her hand. 